12,000 years ago, you could have walked from Melbourne to Hobart without getting your feet wet. Tasmania was connected to mainland Australia by a massive land bridge that stretched across what we now call Bass Strait. Then the Ice Age ended, sea levels rose by 120 meters, and that connection disappeared beneath the waves forever. Or did it? Today, engineers and politicians are seriously discussing the most audacious infrastructure project in Australian history, reconnecting Tasmania to the mainland with either a 240-kilometer bridge or tunnel. The price tag? A staggering $80 billion. The challenges? Unlike anything humanity has attempted before. But here's what makes this story fascinating. It might actually be possible. Tasmania's isolation costs real money every single day. Every bottle of wine shipped from the Tamar Valley. Every fresh Atlantic salmon from Macquarie Harbor and every ton of timber from sustainable forests must be loaded onto the spirit of Tasmania ferries. These vessels charge premium rates because they are the only game in town for freight operators. A standard shipping container, crossing Bass Strait, costs roughly three times what it would cost to truck the same distance on mainland roads. That difference gets passed directly to consumers and squeezes profit margins for Tasmania's 540,000 residents who are trying to compete in national and international markets. The ferry dependency creates another problem that Tasmanians know all too well, weather cancellations. Bay Strait doesn't care about your shipping schedule or your family holiday plans. When storms roll through, which happens frequently during winter months, ferries stay docked, freight gets delayed, tourism suffers, and the island's economy takes a hit. Medical emergencies become logistical nightmares when air ambulances are grounded and ferries can't sail. This isn't theoretical. It happens multiple times every year. But something changed in August 2025 that made reconnection seem less like fantasy and more like genuine possibility. The Marina's Link project received its final investment decision worth $3.9 billion. This massive undertaking will lay a 345-kilometer high-voltage cable across Bass Strait, with 255 kilometers running underwater. The cable will transmit 1,500 megawatts of Tasmania's hydroelectric power to Victoria's grid when construction finishes in 2030. Engineers had to solve the exact same seabed challenges that a bridge or tunnel would face. Unstable geology, extreme depths, and brutal marine conditions. They figured it out. And construction starts in 2026. The success of Marina's Link does something psychologically important. It proves that massive infrastructure projects across Bass Strait aren't pipe dreams anymore. If we can send enough electricity to power half a million homes through undersea cables in one of the world's most hostile marine environments, why couldn't we send cars and trucks too? But there's a reason nobody has attempted this connection before. And it has everything to do with the nightmare waiting in those 240 kilometers of open water. Bay Strait earned its reputation as one of the most dangerous bodies of water on Earth through sheer geological bad luck. It sits directly in the Roaring Forties, a wind belt that circles the Southern Hemisphere between 40 and 50 degrees latitude. These winds have nothing to slow them down as they race around the globe, no mountains or land masses to break their speed. When they hit Bass Strait, they funnel between Tasmania and mainland Australia, accelerating even further. Wind speeds regularly exceed 100 kilometers per hour, and during major storm systems, they've been recorded at over 150 kilometers per hour. The waves these winds generate are genuinely terrifying. 15-meter swells during storms are common, not exceptional. The seabed depth varies wildly, with some sections dropping below 150 meters while others rise to form underwater ridges. This irregular topography makes the waves unpredictable and chaotic. Commercial shipping captains who've spent decades navigating these waters will tell you that Bass Strait demands absolute respect, and even then, it sometimes doesn't care. Most of Australia sits on an extremely stable continental plate with minimal earthquake activity. Bay Strait is different. It lies on a fault line that has produced several notable earthquakes over the past century, including a magnitude 5.3 event in 1818, was felt across both Victoria and Tasmania. 
These aren't California-level threats, but when you're designing a structure that needs to last a century and carry thousands of vehicles daily, even moderate seismic activity becomes a serious engineering constraint. So, if the strait itself is this hostile, how would engineers actually build something that could survive here? The answer lies in two radically different visions. A bridge across Bass Strait would need to be four times longer than the current world record holder, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, which spans 55 kilometers and costs $20 billion to complete. We're talking about a 240 kilometer structure that would require a hybrid design, mixing suspension bridges for the deepest sections and cable stayed spans for shallower areas. The engineering firm that tackles this would need to sink foundation piers into seabeds 150 meters below the surface while working in weather windows that might only last a few weeks per year. Every single tower would need to withstand sustained winds over 100 kilometers per hour and wave impacts that could reach 25 meters high during major storms. Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau took nine years to build with some of the world's best weather conditions and calm waters. Bass Strait would likely require 15 to 20 years of continuous work, assuming weather doesn't cause major delays, which it absolutely would. The estimated cost starts at $80 billion, but that number assumes everything goes according to plan. Given Australia's track record with mega project cost overruns, the final bill could easily push past $100 billion. And that doesn't include maintenance, which would be a nightmare of constant corrosion repairs and structural inspections across 240 kilometers of saltwater exposed infrastructure. In this case, a tunnel sounds safer because it avoids the surface storms entirely, but it brings challenges that are arguably even more extreme. Engineers would need to use three different construction methods depending on depth and seabed composition. Shallow sections could use immersed tube segments, essentially giant concrete tubes built on shore floated into position and sunk into pre-dredged trenches. Denmark is using this exact method for the Feymarn Belt Tunnel, which will connect Denmark and Germany across 18 kilometers of Baltic Sea when it opens in 2029. Deeper sections with solid rock would require massive tunnel boring machines similar to those Japan used for the Seiken Tunnel. That project took 24 years to complete for just 53 kilometers, and it cost over $7 billion in 1988. Adjusted for inflation and the fact that Bass Strait is almost five times longer, you're looking at a minimum $40 to $50 billion price tag, possibly much more if the geology turns hostile. Norway is currently prototyping an even wilder concept. Floating submerged tunnels anchored to the seabed, but suspended in the water column. These would avoid the deepest drilling while staying below the worst surface conditions. But here's the practical nightmare nobody talks about enough. How do you ventilate a 240 kilometer tunnel? The channel tunnel between England and France is 50 kilometers long and requires massive ventilation systems to keep air fresh and evacuate vehicle exhaust. Scale that up nearly five times and you're dealing with engineering problems that have never been solved before. Emergency evacuation becomes another critical issue. If there's a fire or major accident halfway through a 240-kilometer tunnel, how do you get people out safely? These technical challenges are daunting, but they're not the only obstacles standing between concept and reality. The bigger questions involve money, politics, and the environmental cost of ripping through one of the world's most pristine marine ecosystems. Base Strait serves as a critical migration highway for southern right whales, humpback whales, and several dolphin species that travel between feeding and breeding grounds. Construction noise from pile driving and underwater blasting would propagate for hundreds of kilometers through the water, potentially disrupting whale communication and navigation for years. Marine biologists studying these populations have warned that even short-term disruption during critical migration periods could have cascading effects on breeding success rates. Seabed construction would also disturb deep-sea ecosystems that we're only beginning to understand, with potential impacts on fish populations that commercial fishing depends on. On land, the situation gets even more complicated access roads connecting to either a bridge or tunnel would need to cut through some of Tasmania's most protected wilderness areas, including UNESCO World Heritage Forests. 
The Tasmanian devil, already endangered due to facial tumor disease, occupies habitat that would be directly affected by major construction corridors. Environmental impact assessments would take years to complete, and approval is far from guaranteed given Tasmania's strong conservation movement and the political power of environmental groups. Let's talk about the money, because the numbers are genuinely staggering. Tasmania just completed the Bridgewater Bridge in June 2025, their largest infrastructure project ever at $786 million for a 1.2-kilometer crossing. A bridge or tunnel across Bass Strait would be roughly 100 times the cost of Bridgewater Bridge for a project 200 times longer. To put this in perspective, Australia's entire federal infrastructure budget for 2024 to 2025 was approximately $120 billion spread across the whole country, for everything from highways to rail to water systems. To make it worse, Tasmania's population represents just 2% of Australia's total population. The economic return on investment would take potentially a century or more to justify the upfront cost based on current traffic projections and toll revenue estimates. Yet, there are genuine economic benefits that supporters can't stop talking about. Freight costs for Tasmanian exporters would drop dramatically, making their products more competitive nationally and internationally. Tourism would likely explode because driving to Tasmania would become a realistic option for millions of Australians who currently wouldn't consider flying or taking a ferry. Emergency service access would improve enormously, with ambulances and firefighting resources able to cross the strait regardless of weather conditions. So, we've established that this project is technically possible, but economically questionable and politically unlikely. That leaves one final question. Could advancing technology and changing circumstances make this happen someday, even if not anytime soon? The Marina's Link project, which received final approval in August 2025 and begins construction in 2026, will provide crucial real-world data about working in Bass Strait conditions. Engineers will learn what works and what doesn't when laying infrastructure across this particular seabed. If Marina's Link succeeds and operates reliably, it removes some of the uncertainty that makes investors and governments nervous about even bigger projects. Norway is actively prototyping floating submerged tunnels for their coastal highway system, planning connections across several deep fjords that were previously considered unbridgeable. China continues to push the boundaries of what's possible with mega bridges, completing projects that seemed impossible just a decade ago. Globally, several impossible crossings are moving from fantasy toward feasibility. The Gibraltar Strait Tunnel, connecting Spain and Morocco across 28 kilometers of the Mediterranean, is receiving serious feasibility studies in 2025, with advocates pushing for 30 construction. Russia and the United States have periodically revived discussions about a Bering Strait Tunnel linking Alaska and Siberia across 112 kilometers with recent studies in October 2025 declaring it technically feasible, though economically questionable. These projects prove that the engineering community is getting more comfortable with extreme undersea construction. But let's be realistic about the timeline. If the Australian government decided tomorrow to commit to this project, we'd be looking at five to 10 years of detailed feasibility studies and environmental impact assessments. Another two to five years would go toward final design, regulatory approvals, and securing financing. Construction would take a minimum of 10 to 15 years if everything went smoothly, which it never does on projects this complex. We're talking about 20 to 30 years minimum from decision to completion. More likely, this concept stays on the shelf for another decade or two, while technology continues to advance and the economic equation potentially shifts due to factors like climate change impacts or energy transition needs. The Marina's Link success story offers a blueprint for how these ideas can move from speculation to reality. But it took nearly a decade from initial serious studies in the mid-2010s to final investment decision in 2025. A project four times as expensive and 10 times as complex would likely require even more time to build political consensus and secure funding commitments that span multiple election cycles and changes of government. So, what's your take on this massive project? 
Would you drive across a 240-kilometer bridge in Bass Strait? Or would you feel safer in an underwater tunnel? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed diving into this engineering challenge, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more incredible mega project stories. Until next time, thanks for watching.